All right, I want to do an update just for the end of the week. Pretty good week. Pretty good day here today. I didn't just trading around euro pound a little bit. <clears throat> um, didn't do, I didn't trade any cable, no dragon. Just um, not a lot of energy in the FX markets. Um, but I want to just look at some of these closes. All right, so obviously the biggest thing right now is the this equity move and. The story this week was no doubt about the VIX. And let me switch keyboards real quick. And so, you know, uh, um, I was just looking at Apple. I sold some puts down here at 150. We held this support right in front of our pie line. So this is um, a high probability area that the market may or may not hold. But the edge is to be long down here. This is an uptrend, tend to get higher lows at or near the bands. So we broke the eight, fall back to the to the bands here. And this is the critical spot that has to hold, just for example, on Apple. And then you can look at the same thing across the FANG stocks, um, anything really. Uh, we were, we've were we been playing the UVXY a little bit. We talked about on this open here, I forget if it was Tuesday. Uh, establishing a long-term short on UVXY because of the decay and that's been a good trade every time I mean you can't even bring up a chart this thing just decays so much um, I don't want to get too much into that but typically once after this volatility subsides then you make lower lows and yeah maybe we do break this time and maybe the volatility is here to stay but in our model, we still have growth accelerating. We still have um, corporate profits are fine. Yes, now when we when we look at the comparison periods from every subsequent quarter from here, the comps are going to be very difficult versus just some record numbers that we put up last year. That doesn't mean that growth is slowing. It doesn't mean that we're in this. You want to buy treasuries. You want to be long dollar. You want to be out of stocks. We're we haven't rolled over in rated change terms yet from a growth perspective. So that background, in addition to the market is still making higher lows, and it hasn't broken trend long term. Whether you want to look at S and P's, whether you want to look at the Dow. I mean, we were overbought. We've talked about this in our room. Um, you know, we got to some levels where. It just got a little bit stupid. So to get a reaction back the other way, we're really not that surprised. But technically, this trend has not broken yet. So I'm okay fading fading the volatility here. If you go out three or four months, there's some creative ways you can do it on puts. I know I don't know everybody's individual strategy, you know, financial situation, but from a directional standpoint, uh, we were we were buying some puts up here. Anytime you get towards twenty seven, twenty eight. You can kind of trade it around. That that ball came off pretty good. Um, <clears throat> but let's talk about the Dow. Let's talk about uh, the dollar. So again, here's the S and P's. We failed. Um, pretty obviously, this is a, a massive move. So between breaking the bands and the two hundred, it's going to be. This, that's why I always call it no man's land. The better risk reward is to try to maybe nibble a little bit back here towards just underneath 23,000 and or our pie line, which is coming into 22,000. And until you break those levels, if and when you do, everything is still bullish. So that's this whole area right here. I wouldn't be surprised. We have another nasty move into here. Everyone thinks that this is the start of some big bear market, and then we rip them all the way back. Um, because really, longer term, the bubble is in the bond market. The governments are broke. Um, you know, I, uh, we could talk about that, but essentially, I don't see capital rushing out of the stock market into into the bond market at these these levels. So anything's possible, but growth is still accelerating. It hasn't rolled over. That's a fact. The market's still in a long-term uptrend. That's a fact. And this weekly cycle may need to just play out. That's why maybe we need to do we do need to cycle lower here towards the bands. When we look at the dollar, 
Dollar was one of the most crowded positions as well as the pound, long euros and long pounds. And short dollars, sorry, short dollars, long euro, long pounds. One of the most crowded positions you can see you could have in CFT as far as CFTC futures and options positioning, uh, especially on a two to three year uh, Z score. If you want to look at that from um, those averages out a little bit longer than something like a thirty day or sixty day. So anyway, we held our pie line. This is the same kind of thing I've been talking about in stocks, but that's a big area. I'm not surprised the market checked up there. We're still in a long-term bull market for the dollar, and you can't confuse the intermediate-term downtrend for a long-term bull market. You held the 200-month also. So we've been playing um, the dollar on the long side. We've been playing euro short, euro pound short. Today I was trading mostly euro versus the pound. And I'll probably clean up some of this in a little bit long uh, day trade right now. But I'll start leaning back short, uh, core short, here into the weekend and next week. And that's pretty much it. I think the big thing is in stocks. And we'll see volatility is probably definitely going to be at much elevated levels now for the rest of the year. You can pick your spots when we get knocked down and traded around. We were pretty, you know, had a pretty nice double bottom in S and P's to finish the week, but we haven't broken anything, any any longer term monthly or weekly levels. If you call in any type of bear market, that's not that's not the case. You held the two hundred in futures here on the daily. That's a double bottom that people are picking up on. Not surprised. We rallied pretty good off of that. Um, if you bought well down here, you take some off. Here was a bounce to lower high. You failed right at pi here in the four hour. Um, but you're gonna, guys, you're gonna have these big wide ranges, right? So I'm a buyer. 25.50 intraday, big picture. You get me back to like back here on S and P's. You know, you get me back to that same levels on Apple or Pi Line. Any anything that you like that gets back to these levels with if and when the market tests here, that's a buy. Okay, first time down for sure. It's a buy until the market until that breaks, if and when it does. Um, so that's how we'll time it, play it up, time it up with the cycles, and I think that's pretty much it. Bond market's still been very, very bearish, even with all this vol. I mean, <laughs> the ten year could barely catch a bid. Thirty year it couldn't do shit. I mean, just straight finishing on the lows. So. Definitely in a in a bear market here, and the long term is getting closer. Even this is big, I guess, for the month here. If we can close below these lows, one forty five twenty three, this is a this is new, completely new for the long end. It'll be a brand new lower low in the long term charts for the third year. It's the only part of the curve that was hanging in. Tens already broke, fives broke, twos broke years ago. See how we're below all these lows, so I I, I expect the thirty to probably to follow suit here. Um, we're definitely in a long term bear market, so we've been short tens. Continue to want to trade it that way. The curve steepened a little bit this week, and you know there's there's room to trade fives or from the long side against the tens and thirties. But um, that, I mean the fact that bonds couldn't get any flight to quality one tells me that there's not that much fear. Relative to, you know, we're not in some big, big bear market, but it also tells me that bubble was in the bond market, that bonds are going down with stocks. You have all that volatility and no one cared to buy treasuries. That's new. And I like gold down here, too. Uh, that's that's changed this week. We've been waiting for a pullback. We were very extended. We moved here down here from Pi in a straight move, 1360. Now we've retraced half that move. Gold looks pretty good here, especially as a little bit of a hedge against our long dollar position. Tough to get both the dollar down and gold down at the same time on something big global macro move. So if the dollar does kind of weaken, hopefully that uh, gold will have the, you know, the inverse correlation that it normally does. So, anyway, guys, enjoy your weekend. Um, listen, it, you know, the community has been growing. I'd like to get some more traders in here and just kind of pick things up. 
Um, so again, if you want to join our, our trading team, we trade anything that moves. I have a trading model that I teach. Um, this is our site, JenkinsRM.com. We're building a digital asset management firm, so we've been really focused on crypto, but we have a chat room for that with real-time alerts. This is the training model. This is this is good for, again, any market. So it's nine hours of on-demand video. We go over the three pillars of our model, analysis, execution, risk. I mean, the mental analysis, trading, trading plans, how to really view the trend. We're big on cyclical analysis. Nobody ever talks about that. Um, but those are the keys to really become a real consistent, um, you know, trader that knows what they're doing. So that's from all my years of experience trading big money, real money in the U.S. Treasury space. Ran a couple of fixed income desks, and um, yeah, so that's what that's about. And then if you want, if you want some coaching, and we trade together, uh, this is the next level here. We have options in a program for that. So anyway, guys, look forward to seeing some new names and faces uh, in the room next week. And again, have a great weekend.